it is finally here, the long-awaited feature upgrade for Dyson Sphere program, Rise of the Dark Fog. My name is Nilaus, and for the last couple of days I've had access to the pre-release version of this game, and I've been wondering what I should sh be showcasing to you as the embargo is lifted. This video is a showcase of what the Dark Fog is and what to expect, and how it integrates into the normal game. Let me start by saying that it is absolutely amazing, and it fits so well into the core of the game. It is both a big change in the way that you approach the game, but also at the same time, it just doesn't, doesn't change the core of the game, which is about logistics and factory building. I'm streaming all weekend at Twitch. This is at Twitch TV slash Nilao, so drop on by and follow the progress as we build the factory and struggle with the Dark Fog. I will of course also be creating content for YouTube that includes a let's play, that includes guides, tutorials, masterclasses and blueprints, all the stuff that you've come to expect. So if you for some reason have not subscribed to the channel, then now may be a good time because there will be a ton of Dyson Sphere, Dyson Sphere program content coming up. Let's dive in and see what it's like. How did we end up in a situation like this? Well, this is definitely not the start. This is uh, somewhere in the middle of my playthrough and we're being attacked on our lava planet because I was just a little bit careless at some point. But sometimes when we get to set up our defenses, things are going a lot better. Look at that, an early game defense set up and they just uh, rush into our turrets and are taken care of easily. So that's the difference between attack and defense when we are prepared and when we're not prepared. We can also go in and attack the uh, enemies in orbit. That's uh, a bit, a little bit reckless, but you know, it has to be done. We have to try it. We are just tickling them with our own lasers. Luckily, we have these Corvettes that are uh, sort of escorting and they're quite good, but look at the massive size of this structure. Here we have some uh, planetary defense actually working really, good, really well as uh, anti-air. You can see there are some uh, incoming spaceships here and uh, our planetary defense is uh, just taking care of it. And we can see that just, and they will just, can we shoot them before they shoot us? I don't think so. Probably a good idea to start where, see where we started. And there we go, they shoot the lasers on our building. Well, let's start from the beginning. That's probably a good place to start. So, right as you land on the planet, you will see that there is actually already a presence on the map, on the scene, your home planet. Which is pretty cool, because that means there's something that you engage with the dark fog immediately. You can see over here somewhere and if we scan in then we can take a look at here it's a small base and it's uh, just in the process of building up so we can start on our early game constructions and just get ready for it so before long we will actually have the first incoming attack you can see we barely built anything at the <laughs> at this moment but they're still coming in you can see the red bar up here in there's uh, the two bars. The one bar up top is for the hive cluster in the solar system and the lower one is for uh, the, the particular base on the planet. And you can see that they are coming in. Five, six of them are coming in. We have some basic defense on Icarus. Well, we can't even fly. Uh, so let's make sure we at least have a little bit of fuel and then as, as they come in, where are they? Where are they? So you can switch to the new uh, attack mode here where you can't accidentally click on a lot of things. It's both handy and, uh, and and impractical, both practical and impractical at the same time. So it's just slowly because we're very early game. Luckily, these are not particularly dangerous. So we just uh, <laughs> kite back and uh, take them out. But they're also just munching on this. So this is very akin to the early biters in Factorio. And we can then take care of the first little attack. And then we have peace and quiet. The threat meter resets and we have more time again before they come back. Now it's uh, our time to set up some perimeter defense uh, up here. We've located it. We built some an ammo belt that's uh, getting out here. And then it's time for us to set up some some structure so that they will always attack into this line. And uh, by killing them as they spawn, then they will never sort of accumulate a large army to send out against us. And we'll just sort of uh, take them out as, uh, as they come in, which is super handy. So we have our... The belt here. Everything is unfortunately super slow because it's early game. We set up these turrets. These are the normal ammo turrets. Look at that. You can build them and you can also build them on, on Ghost. This is really nice. Uh, it's a lot of small convenience factors here, which I think is super nice. And you can see that they actually get fed by the belt and the belt sort of progresses onto the next. Here we have another uh, interesting new building, the uh, battlefield command thing, which is super cool. It's uh, It has... Uh, it has uh, construction bots. It has 12 construction bots, which is way more than I have at this point. So it can actually be used to basically like a roboport in Factorio, which I think is super amazing. 
So, ooh, look at that. The range of their their towers is higher than the range of the turrets. So they don't shoot the turrets, but they will shoot me if I even get closer. So I need to to just uh, aggro something. If we just t take a little shot, we can take a pot shot and we just drag them in here, see if we can aggro them into our turret line. There we go. Oh, they still shoot at us from that range. That's crazy. But we can just aggro in and there we go. Now they're coming in. And as they're coming into my, uh, my defenses, we can easily take care of them. And from here, we actually have pretty good range. We, I'm also using the same copper ammo. Very nice that it's copper because that means we're actually uh, using copper for something which was uh, sorely needed in the earlier game. Uh, what we can do is actually you can stand here from the safety and then just start shooting. It takes a hell of a long time, but you know, you can. Just start uh, both triggering the, the enemies so that they will be pulled into your uh, your turret line but also you can actually take out the turret because you have somehow longer range than they have so if you have the patience you can uh, you can set this up and just start shooting away so now patience is all that needed if you want to take them out like this or we can also sort of move on and do other things you can see that it will take quite a while to uh, to take those out but hey it's good to have an option early game and uh, you can see there we go, with patience, or we could also continue if you want. But there's something better in the pipeline, and you will be seeing that as we unlock more tech, we have more options. And the next option we have is Missile Defense Tower. Let's take a look at that and see how that works. So now we uh, we have set up the same perimeter. We also have a signal tower, which is basically just uh, aggroing and making sure that they will attack towards that location. I use a little blueprint to set up my, my uh, turret. This turret is absolutely amazing. So it starts out by not attacking the high air because the high air is, it has four targets. Ground is buildings. Um, low is, low air is sort of the enemies. High air is this, the platform relay station up in orbit. And then uh, we have space that's uh, spaceships out there. And it actually starts by not triggering, uh, not shooting at the high air because it's kind of silly to have it shoot up there in the beginning. You don't need to take this out because you can take out anything on the ground, then it will detach and uh, disappear. But, you know, um, I think we, we'd we rather want to focus on the ground targets before doing anything else. And then we can use our blueprint and it goes up and it will be fed automatically by the belt of uh, missile ammo. Nothing really happens yet. It's still out of range. So we can just build another one and I'll just set this. So it doesn't attack and let's see if we can build another one. So it'll start shooting at the enemies that sort of come nearby. But this one will actually now start shooting at buildings as well as soon as it gets the, the ammo. The ammo is coming here. And from here it now starts shooting at the, at the buildings and from a nice safe distance. This is pretty damn amazing. And the missile turret is, in my opinion, the go-to weapon for taking out bases. It is so efficient because you can stand from a really far away and just have it built. And there we go. It builds. It automatically refuels. And then it's just one more thing uh, that gets uh, gets shooting. Now the, the rear two turrets, they're not really doing anything. Uh, we could set them to shoot at uh, the orbital relay station. Mm, let's actually do that while they don't have anything. We'll just set it at low priority uh, for these two. And then they will start shooting up here. And we can copy that setting to the other ones so that if they don't have anything else, then we'll shoot at the orbital relay station. We want to kill all of it. And from here, it's just basically using the defense as a as an uh, as as offensive weapon. There we go. They, it's taken out. Uh, unfortunately, the text is in Chinese. Don't know. Um, maybe that's the, the test version that I have. Um, but anyway, they'll probably say something meaningful. And uh, as we take out the last bits of the of the base at the station here. We'll also take out the orbital base or the relay station of an orbit. And we just have more things shooting at that. And there we go. That should be taking care of that one up in orbit. And we want to close the ground because once you've, you've taken out, even if the relay, if you take everything on the ground, it'll still respawn and rebuild. But now the relay station has been uh, killed. All the ground stuff has been uh, killed. And then in order for us to proceed, we used to need a lot of foundation in order to fill this hole. It looks really cool. <laughs> you just drill a hole into the core. Click. There we go. It's closed and we have now dislodged them from the planet and it's time to get started on construction. 
Well, now that we have our base uh, secured and if I build some stuff, maybe it's time to just have a little glance at the, orb, the the base up here. We have some new fuel. That's really nice that there's new fuel. It's also needed for rockets. And uh, we take a look at it. This is still a, an orbital hive cluster that's uh, in the early stages, but it still looks so damn amazing, right? I mean, how can you not love this? It's so cool. And you can just uh, look at the different types. You can see that thing that hovers there, that's the core. I would imagine that's the one we have to kill in order to dislodge this from the entire system. That is not something we can do anytime, uh, anytime soon. But uh, this thing is just keep getting bigger and bigger and uh, more and more awesome. It's so impressive to sort of look at the, your factory and then look up in the sky and see this massive structure sort of blocking out the sky. Uh, we have to be careful not to get too close. So, you know, fly casual, but don't look like you fly casual. Just, yeah, keep a distance, but don't look like you keep a distance. We'll just fly casual. You can see we took uh, just a few shots and it took out most of our shields. And uh, let's get out of there. It's time for us to head to the lava planet. You can see that there are four bases here. So what is the first thing we want to do when we have a new base or when we land on a new planet that is infected? with the dark fog well uh, we need to build a ammo factory and it just so happens that uh, i'm just looking for a place with coal iron and copper nearby we got that so once we have that let's uh, we need to make sure that we land safely on the planet and find a good location when we have a good location we just go in get some pre-prepared blueprints because it wouldn't be uh, my channel here if i didn't have some awesome nice design blueprints that are ready to go and we just stamp it down here. This one takes care of missiles and also uh, primarily missiles and also the, uh, the copper ammo as well. So we also on top of that need some power and we're going to be using the thermal power for this. This is absolutely amazing. I love the fact that you can on the second planet you can use thermal power. It's so nice because uh, that really just means that you don't have to worry about too much on with power on the second one so it's uh built it just it always takes a little bit of time in the beginning to get stuff done and we can get this going so we have our factory here nice little factory module we still haven't engaged with the enemies but they have noticed us and you can see that their threat is slowly increasing just from the mere fact that we are building factories on their planet so from here what we need to do is uh, head out now that we have our missile turret ammo and also our normal ammo so we need to dislodge them from the North Pole so we can get the silicon and also dislodge the other ones as well. So once we uh, have built closer, we now have a defensive perimeter with the normal ammo turrets and uh, we now can we'll start aggroing them with the rockets, uh, with the uh, missile turrets. And we're just going to be building them here and they will ag aggro. Will they aggro anything? Yes, they will need to immediately aggro something. That's the beauty of the... The turrets and we also you can see here that little uh, orange square hovering over me that is uh, some scouts or some prototype uh, drones that are following me and engaging as well they kind of tend to blow up really quickly so they're nice to have but think of them more as expendable uh, than something you build once so it's a uh, it's nice to have and uh, they are certainly convenient we can then start working closer with more of these turrets uh, missile turrets and they start, they actually are attacking my uh, my belts. That's a little bit annoying. Let's make sure, persuade them not to keep attacking our belts by just uh, killing them. There we go. The turret is targeting and they have stopped attacking. And now we start attacking the sort of the core of the base and they will still shoot me further than they will shoot the, the, uh, the turrets. It's a little bit weird that they will not shoot the turrets, but they'll shoot me. Don't care. But look at the threat meter on the, uh, on the left hand side. The three of the hives, those are the other three hives, have really high threat because uh, as we destroy enemies, they will be angry and they will start building up their force more rapidly and they will be sending them out very soon. So the last one, the lower one, is the one we have here that doesn't have a high threat because everything that we, everything that they have will be killed immediately. So they can't really build up a, a high threat. The high threat is basically a, a matter of of how many enemies they have collected that or how many units they've collected and are ready to send out so now they are sending out an attack force towards us from one of the other hives and we can then mark the hive and there we go we found them so now here the drones are super useful because now we can just roam and uh, try to figure out where they are there they are coming after us and uh, just i just need to fly closer look at that they engage themselves the little drones 
and there we go we are taking all of them oh i saw some some additional ones over there and you can see that we also need to take care of them now the next hive is actually attacking so they are getting really angry with us uh, destroying the bases we need to get back and destroy the rest of it oh there we go and we can also just heat help shooting and once we destroy this attack force, then it'll be nice and quiet. Ah, there they are. I knew they were sort of... So this is a kind of a thing when you engage one, then if there are multiple locations, then the other ones will be really angry. So make sure that you keep your defenses up so you don't have to do like this roaming, but you can just rely on your defenses. So that was the two. Two of those had been attacked, and the third one is probably going to attack very soon as well. Uh, we are now been clearing out the majority of this planet and uh, I'll just show sort of what we can also do we can also just have this blueprint here I've set up a nice convenient blueprint that is taking care of all the things that we need uh, pretty much you can always refine it with more things but it does have like a charging point it has uh, this battlefield command location then I have this box that has ready for things and it will just filter the output so that the ammo goes on the ammo belt and also the missiles go a little bit further there we go and it will now use the other blueprint here and just start inching our way forward with that. Uh, it's a little bit misplaced. That doesn't matter. And then we just make that one. And once that's done, well, maybe it'll aggro once it has ammo. Nope, not aggroing yet. Okay, well, we need to get a little bit close. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's aggroing. And we still have the drones up there. And now they, this is also the one they decided to attack. You can see over on the right-hand side, there are actually some of them that are escaping and heading towards my uh, my base that's a little bit inconvenient but you know it's uh, as long as we take care of all of this it's a, it's actually really inconvenient that the attack force just made it out before we uh, react with them but from now on we actually are starting to attack and unfortunately you can't paste it across the fault lines let's call them that or whatever we want to call them so we'll just do this uh, kind of manual we can we can do that and in the meantime, this turret is just chucking along and uh, getting work done there. And also get a little bit, there we go, it's getting inbound and also a little thing. And there we go, we are now shooting at this one and we are now, we have control of this part. So now the only question is, hmm, what happened to the ones that got away? Ah, well, that's a problem for another time. Oh, look at that. As soon as we get ahead of our defensive line, we get shot immediately. So we need to stay back. And this is why it's uh, so important to to stay yeah, well, stay safe here. Ah, we'll just do that manually and take another, another turret forward and also there. So once that's done, you can, we can reach it with our robots. It takes a little bit of time and it'll start shooting. Now the next one starts shooting. Excellent. So there's really not much left. And we can just take out the remaining. And as it gets dislodged, we can close it and then it detaches the one in orbit and that will fly away. It's a little annoying. We should actually kill it. But that it means that the planet is ours. What we can do now is the titanium shuffle. And that was why we actually came to this place in the first place. So just to get all of the good titanium here. There we go. I get all the titanium. And then it's about flying back to our home planet so we can start building some more advanced uh, materials. Now we can unlock and start working towards the yellow signs and also the planetary logistics. So off we jump away with all this in hand. Don't click on anything and then you can carry as much as you want on the way back. And don't fly too close to that location. Let's just look around and see if we can find, well, first find the sun. Yes, and they're fine. There we go. Then we're heading back. So uh, back at our home base, we are uh, continuing with the factory building, building some green, what are they called? Green turbines? Yes. Well, they're not called green turbines. Electromagnetic turbines. Uh, those are the things we want. We also want a lot of other things. But, you know, as we, uh, as we work here, the base is progressing, looking nice. But uh, as always, when we are at one base, then uh, the other one gets... Uh, uh, gets attacked so we kind of neglected the fact that there were some new positions coming to our lava planet and i kind of ignored it a little bit which was not really the smartest thing so we have to rush back and uh, and defend 
and uh, well don't wait on like this because what happens is exactly as you can see here like we have these drones that are helping us uh, every, all the titanium cluster has been uh, wrecked here and we now have to sort of dislodge them from inside my base also maybe a good idea to put a few turrets here and there also missile turrets you know but you know this is why we uh, we learned this is my uh, this is my advice to you free advice here maybe build some defensive turrets and just defensive buildings in general as you uh, as you progress so i think we we haven't quite dislodged them nope we have not <laughs> they are just they're still exploding and oops that trying to pick up uh, thousands of units of titanium that's not happening but now it stopped working it stopped the uh, blinking and making that awful awful sound <laughs> so it is time for us to uh, oh that hurts um to dislodge them from this planet again and i think i can be as reckless i, I want to show you how reckless we can be with this uh, because i think it's it's uh, once we have a few upgrades it's actually super simple so what we do is uh, we just build a turret and then control click it in and then that is done we copy and then we can just paste it in moving forward and once it's done while it's uh, being placed there we go next one and at some point we'll get in range and when we get in range we have a few turrets behind that will also start working there we go that'll start working and now they aggro so these three turrets they're actually enough because we also have uh, you can see that they are taking uh, quite a lot of damage so but yeah uh, we're healing them we are repairing we're still adding and the turrets are just absolutely amazing against these small critters. And it looks like we have broken their defenses and we can then start pushing forward with more. And while this building, pick up a stack and put it in there and moving forward as well. Just slowly cl uh, crawling forward. There, next one. Now, are the turrets too good? Mm, I don't know. Maybe they kind of are. Uh, they they kind of feel a little bit, a uh, little bit too good here. Oh, there's someone shooting at me. Oh, that got wrecked. Okay, let's uh, not use that one too. That's a little bit too close, and it got wrecked again. Okay, so we just need to wait a little bit until we clear out a few of those uh, attacking turrets once we have those then we can uh, we can go in again and we're also just shooting up top as well i think the turrets they're really just our bread and butter in, ter in terms of what uh, what, what we're going to be using and uh, that would be my recommendation at least the way that they are balanced right now i uh, don't really think there's a need for any of the other ones at this moment up to level four i think is uh, level four and then we see now the hive cluster is attacking that's really unfortunate because when the hive cluster attacks they send ships out and you'd think that three ships is not really a big deal but those three ships are actually they're actually uh, staying in orbit and just uh, bombarding the planet which is really annoying which is uh, something you can't really defend against unless of course you have uh, anti-air hmm or anti-orbital so uh, build that there build it here and then get some more in here. We need to figure out where they are actually coming in from. And so we can see that they are coming in from the hive. And we need to deal with that while we are taking out the remainder of, uh, of this base. Let's see how much is left. There's not really much left. And that one is also almost done in the relay station. But of course the, bi the uh, enemy does not like this. So let's have a look. Are they coming in? They are coming in towards us. So they are coming in here. Uh, attacking this planet that's actually really nice so they're actually coming here but we are now dislodging the relay station with our missile turrets i think that's a it takes a little bit long time because i, I want to also s uh, show you how we deal with those incoming ships because that's pretty damn amazing there we go and we are almost done there we go that's the last part of it of this one and it's done and we've now dislodged it and then we just copy the settings so that they also target in space and there we go now they got in range this looks so amazing i absolutely love this part i was really surprised when it happened how well this works and they just shoot 
volleys and volleys and the first of the ships is already it's down and then the next one comes in just keep launching keep launching uh, but we are gonna go up there look at those lasers that is what hurts this is what you don't want those uh, bombarding lasers those are the ones that will take out huge swaths of our factory so you really want to try to kill them before they do that or maybe if there only there was some kind of other defense and uh, that could be defense in orbit or you know there's definitely options and you can see how they don't really stand a chance with uh, all these missiles coming their way our oh, shoots again and uh, that, that's really annoying when it shoots because well i don't know we'll just fix it there we go got sorted and it's all quiet again perfect so it'll it has destroyed some things but that is something we can definitely fix now back on the, our normal or our home planet we built some of the more important things yeah, the green turbines are working the blue engines and the pink containers i hate those names i can't remember superconducting something and particle containment something yes and also graphene so we're well on our way towards the yellow science at this moment um, but uh, there's also other things we uh, we saw those uh, really nasty attacks bombardments coming in from the the ships from the high cluster so what you can do is you can build this thing this is a planetary defense uh, planetary shield so you can build a planetary shield it takes a silly amount of power and but it looks amazing it's just everything about this uh, this update just fits so well together because one of the problems previously was that the idea of a Dyson Sphere was you got a lot of power, but you didn't really have anything to use the power for. You could easily get way more power than you needed. So having new stuff like defenses and also a planetary shield that is uh, consuming a huge amount of power, way more than I can, thing is a great move. You can see here now the power is initiated and the light blue part is where it is actually active. Um, and you can see it just slowly goes up each one of these planetary uh, shields takes 25 megawatts of power and can uh, shield four percent of the planet so you need to have 25 of those if you want the entire planet shielded uh, from attacks and then they will sort of they will absorb that damage from uh, from those uh, orbital bombardments until they break of course so that's a uh, that's the question of, of how well that works um, but it looks uh, pretty good and if we put in some more you can see that it covers a bigger area unfortunately this is just straining our power way too much so even though it looks cool with a mohawk on the planet then it's not something i can do before i have way better power than uh, than i currently have available so you know it's a uh, it's it's something that now we need we have something to strive for in terms of getting more power than just what we need for for this so one thing that we can do now is focus on the yellow science yellow science is coming up and it's uh, looking pretty good with the yellow science it's just uh, an old build i'm not focusing on proliferation or anything we just want to get this going and uh, the stuff we want to research is this thing the corvette that's a space fleet so we looked at those space drone the drones they only work on on the planet side but the corvettes are actually uh orbits uh, in sp space faring so we need to get some some of those going and uh, once we have that we need to put a little factory for it they are kind of expensive but hey they're totally worth it because that allows us to do space combat so we have uh, some of them included here uh, let's let's grab a few <laughs> uh, they don't seem to break very easily and you have here the tab for space uh, there are different formations the current formation is also including a devastator but we don't have the devastator unlocked that's an even better spaceship uh, that takes up four times as much space as a corvette so that's going to be awesome you can see the space hive is un uh, unfriendly to say the least so let's uh, go poke it with a stick and uh, the stick being eight corvettes and uh, you what i found out was that um, it needs a hell of a lot of power so you really need to turn on fuel before you can actually go out they consume 3.14 megawatt of power all the time that is way too much for your normal uh, when you're also flying around especially in out here so that's why i only have eight and not 12 as i could have but look at them here in this uh, orange square that's where they are they have this formation four and four and we uh, can then switch over to uh, some different commands in terms of how they resupply and how they how we control them whether i'm the one controlling it or they just sort of patrol around me so let's dive in let's see how space combat works this is of course something that's in uh, part of the phase two of the uh, of the combat mode oh there you go they engage them by themselves and they just start shooting at something so the orange lasers they are ours the teal lasers they are the 
enemy lasers so keep that in mind we can also shoot and it doesn't really do anything when when we shoot and we are incredibly fragile so just a few hits and our shields are gone if the shields are gone then we can't really fly because all of our power is redirected to the shields it's um it's definitely there's some there's some balancing things that i have not really been sorted out or maybe it's just because i'm only at yellow signs and i'm trying to get out here be way before i i should there we go you can see that i poke it but then the corvettes are coming in they're always just strafing and circling and aggroing and doing all sorts of stuff so we are we're trying to make a little dent in their in their formations so these formations are ready oh look at that it looks so cool do a strafing run and we can finish it up a little bit here yes there we go and the next one is just being targeted but what we're doing is we're fighting these uh, I don't know, we can call them interceptors. They're called humpbacks and uh, they are the ones that sort of engage us and while the rest of them are just standing in formation. And these are the ones that are, they have a lot of hit points. They are quite durable and hmm, we don't really kill them fast enough. <laughs> we, we, I was hoping that we could sort of really make a dent into this and then get, uh, get started. But what we're seeing is that the speed by which we're, uh, we're killing them is less than their respawn rate so by the time we're we've killed something then they will actually uh, have respawned already and as we get closer and uh, then we also take a little a few hits uh, once in a while and if we do take some hits it's uh, there we go we take we take a little bit of hit and oh it didn't actually take hits we can still see we have the full shield and the full uh, health bar but our fuel is uh, is diminishing from just the navigation so they're really, um, you can really say they're really docile. They, they're not really shooting much. But uh, once they do, then it it gets really unfortunate for us. Uh, we just don't need, look at that. Also, our laser, just it just tickles them. This is nothing. And until the Corvettes come in for a strafing run, then something happens. There's a lot of things going on here. They are so durable. I've also got all the upgrades I can do at Yellow Science. I wanted to make sure that we are as prepared as we can for, for this attack. But yeah, you can see we, we can we can kill one here and there, but um, it's uh, it's not really making a, a dent in the, in the population. So this is definitely either it's it's not ready or it's we are not ready. Either way, it's uh, it's pretty fun. It is pretty cool, and it shows a lot of promise for uh, what is to come because all of the functionality works in sort of like the way that they navigate and fly around. And oh, we took a few hits. Oh, that hurt. Ow, 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 ow. Look at that. Oh, that's a lot of hits. And uh, from there on, we are uh, actually in big trouble because now all of our power is being used to regenerate this shield, which means we don't really have any power left. You can see it just diminishes. So it, I guess it's kind of time for us to start uh, running away. If we look at the overlay here, we can see that all the red ones are the ones that are aggroed. I think that what it means, not the ones that are damaged, but those are the ones that aggroed because of uh, probably proximity. But uh, yeah, and this is, you can see the power. It's just not really getting any surplus. The, whatever the surplus we have is being uh, allocated to, uh, to the shield and the shield is not really increasing very much. So. Definitely need better fuel, and which I guess is antimatter fuel. So that's a little bit out of the way. Um, yeah. So maybe it's time for us to to just try to disengage from uh, this. We have unfortunately sort of aggroed a little bit, or we have uh, caused a little bit of damage to. Uh, well, we caused more threats. So they are still on the orange here, and they will be attacking pretty soon. And now I just need to figure out a way to get out of this mess. We can see here a little bit of information. It's really hard to read the tooltip, especially when it's in Chinese. But even if it wasn't in Chinese, I probably would be really struggling a little bit reading it while uh, while being attacked. As we're disengaging, we see that we can uh, we have made absolutely no dent in the population. There are still my corvettes. They need to come back to me. But uh, yeah, we are heading back. Oh, and as we are heading back, you. Uh, we accidentally fly a little bit too close to the lava planet, and what happens is that my corvettes actually start um, start engaging there. They they look at that. They fly in, 
And because they fly in and engage the clusters or the planetary bases, it now triggers an attack from the hive cluster and we have no power left. So we are a little bit in, uh, in trouble. So options, options. I'm going to choose the option of landing on the lava planet because I can't get any more power without uh, actually landing here. But look at how amazing it looks. Like these corvettes are just, they're just doing their own thing. They're flying around and they are killing um, uh, killing the orbital bases or the relay station. That's what it's called, the orbital part of their enemy base. So we'll be standing here and uh, just recharging as fast as we can. And uh, that's then we have a look at where are the enemies coming? Oh, there they are. They're coming to our home planet. That's not great. So uh, we need to charge up quickly and then uh, engage, uh, intercept them before they get there. Remember, they will be doing these laser bombing runs on the on the planet and we really don't want that so in the meantime my corvettes are just flying around shooting i love this this is such a cool idea that i never even thought about it like having these autonomous drones but in orbit that are just uh, flying around and focusing on this uh, relay station. i don't know if they're trying to shoot through the planet or what but it's all good it's all good just take that stupid planet uh, the other relay station has been destroyed already and we have almost full shield and we need to make sure that the shield is also up and then we need to hurry on home all right so now we have the, the fuel so we can gear up we can speed up into a proper and that there we go come on uh get back here that the annoying sound is well annoying but uh that is kind of drawing your attention that you need to deal with it and uh, that we have to absolutely do so let's go back to our planet and see if we can intercept them. What is really interesting here is that I actually have some missile turrets standing on the home planet and they will engage together with us, which is super good. There we go. There go my Corvette. They are going on intercept mission. I love this part. Like I love the part that they are just coming in and they're shooting. And we're also coming in. You can see missiles are coming from the planet. So I absolutely love this this part. It's it's so glorious, the fact that you are... That we are how how well the whole thing connects like these uh, the planetary defenses oh man it's so cool but we have a uh, dissuaded them from here from attacking but they think they did uh, do a few strafing runs well if we look at the top of the screen we can see that there's a lot of stuff that is broken so yeah they did actually attack some things and uh, look at that some strafing runs on our planet to uh, just did a little bit of damage but also destroy some things so that's uh that's the consequence of it well if you had a planetary shield this would never happen so that's some pretty uh, amazing things and from here well uh, this is as much as i i basically had time for in uh, in in the few days i had uh, before and uh, i had to start a new game and uh, this is as far as i got but remember i'm streaming on twitch tv slash nilaus all weekend so uh, make sure that you drop by on uh, on stream where we'll be starting a new game all the way from scratch and trying some a few new different things and uh, just figuring out what uh, we go oh look at that look at these corvettes they're now uh, in escort pattern around my base which is super cool uh, here we have uh, just a planetary base um, also another thing i will also be uh, making a new let's play series on uh, on youtube so that is coming this weekend as well look at that we are catching it just as it sends out a new relay station and uh, isn't that amazing like they build relay stations and then it is time to go up so it'll go in here to the lava planet and then it will we just cleared the lava planet and then just as we do that another one comes in now i give you this impression that it seems like it's basically just whack-a-mole that every time you kill them you they uh, drop another one but it isn't quite quite like that um, but uh, it, i'm also putting it on a little bit higher difficulty and because I wanted to get as much experience with the Dark Fog as possible. And I think it's super amazing. But it doesn't change the core of the game from being a factory game. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care. And as always, stay effective.